Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Sheep Game for Nintendo Switch. This time we're gonna take a look at Dungeon Village, a game made by Kairosoft, the same developer that made Oedo. This game used the same game engine as Oedo, and you started out the same way, naming your adventure, naming the town, Choose the gender and pressing start. And just like Oedo, this game is a city management simulation game. But there is where the similarities stop, more or less. Oedo was focusing on just making money. Money, money, money. In this game, you're actually gonna look after your adventures. You develop your town to look after them and not looking after them to develop the town. To understand what I mean, I recommend you to look at my Oedo video. Enough about Oedo. So this game is, like I said, about looking after your adventures. You help them develop. And that will help you in the end. So what you wanna do is that you wanna build up your popularity and that will bring more adventures into your town and that will help your town get protected from the monsters that want to attack the town. You can't interfere with the adventures, they are their own and they will do whatever they want to do. You can however give them quests when they are available and you can hire specific people to join in on the quests. By sending them on quests, like exploration quests, they will go into a dungeon, a forest or something like that, and they will bring back treasures. These treasures can be armors, weapons or consumables. When you get a weapon, for example, you will unlock it for all other adventurers. So you can buy more of that specific weapon at a weapon shop and gift it to your adventurers to help them develop. And the same thing with armors. And this mechanic by gifting them things is actually one of the main things you need to do to keep them happy and want to move to your town. And to get adventurers to move to your town will actually be of great help for you because when they move to town, when they get their house, they will give you a gift. Some adventurers will give you some consumables, but some will actually give you powerful weapons. And a few of them will actually give you buildings. And that will give you more weapons and consumables that can be used for other things. Like for example, when you have gotten a bit in the game, you will unlock something that's called the cauldron. And you will throw consumables in there and then that will in the end unlock new things for you spells buildings weapons armors and other consumables that will help your adventures unlock more stats that will make them harder to kill for the monsters you can also throw some consumables at your buildings to help them develop like increase the quality, their appeal, or the price. The quality and the appeal will make adventurers visit more often. And, like I said, you increase the price, more profit for you. There are a lot of classes in this game for your adventurers to have. Like the warrior, or the merchant, or the farmer. All of them have some specialty, like the merchant for example, it will increase the prices in your shops, or the farmer that reduces the prices of your plants that you can buy, or you can make them a mercenary that makes them pay higher taxes every year when it's time to pay the taxes for the house that you have built for them. However, every year you give out medals to your adventures and these medals are essential for when they are switching professions 
or classes. Uh, you need specific amount for specific classes. Like mercenary needs two, monk needs one. So if you have an adventurer that goes to level 10, which is the highest for every class, uh, then they will wanna switch profession. But if you don't have enough medals, you can't choose that profession for them and have to choose another. Also to unlock the classes, you have to have an adventurer that reaches level 10 with a specific class. When you've done that, it will get unlocked for the game forever, even if you start a new game, they will be available from start. Like I show you here, I will have May reaching level 10 with the cooking profession or class, and uh, that will unlock it for other people. But now she wants another class, so I make her to a monk. Because she didn't have enough medals to become a knight. And after May have chosen a new job, we will see that the introduction of Cook will be available. And just so it happens, I have another one that wants a new job. So, when we just unlock the Cook, why not make Froda Cook? So we did. Now, to raise the stats of your adventurers, giving them consumables is not the only way to do it. You can actually use the events to do this. You mainly use the events to increase the popularity of your town to get more adventurers to move in. But you can also use it to give them HP, toughness or luck, depending on what you pick. To hold an event you need event points and you get it by completing the quests and defeating bosses and stuff like that. And just like most carrier soft games, you have 15 years to get as far as you can in one playthrough. After 15 years, whatever you do won't carry over to the next game. So after 15 years you will get your high score and then you will be ready for a new game. So to the big question, is this game any fun? Well yeah, I think so. But I on the other hand loves management games. So if you don't do that, this game might be a pass for you, because a lot of management, a lot of menu scrolling, and that's basically what you do, actually. So if you don't like management or simulations, that can be a bit tedious for you, I think. If I were to give this game any critics, it would be all the mash pits that occur from time to time. All your adventure will be in one place, knocked out waiting to be revived and just lay there and it's a bit tedious yeah and you can't really do anything about it you can of course buy a lot of ointment cells and elixirs to revive them straight away but they will just be knocked out straight again they don't stand a chance even my main adventure that I had changed job about five or six times he have stats carrying over every time he changed the job but he as well if he did, wasn't a mercenary or anything else that was bulky he would get a one shot he knew all the spells fire ice lightning healing still not a chance just straight to the mash pit with everyone else Still, I picked this game up for a dollar at the sale, and I can say I had a lot of fun with it, and I highly recommend it if you're into these kind of games. I know it's a cell phone port, and there is a Dungeon Village 2 that exists on mobile devices, and I really hope they do the same job carrying it over to the Switch like they did with this one. I can't hope that they 
to the port in the future. I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching and see you next time.